Welcome back. Marlene here with some more L.A. Noir. About to start, I guess not technically our fourth case on arson, since our last case we were working as Kelso on California Fire and Life. <laughs> so I'm not really sure what to expect in this part, but what I do know is we are definitely going to be seeing Cole and Kelso interact in this one. I mean, they have to based on how the last one ended. So I don't have too much to say about that last case aside of the fact that clearly Kelso is into it and it's time to team up, hopefully, and probably not succeed, but we'll see trying to take down Monroe this huge grand conspiracy they have taking government money i believe is what's going on i don't know i still have a lot of questions so let's just play and find out a polite invitation oh where are we what's this whose house is this oh is this some sort of hospital It's not looking too good. Look at the freaking bruise on his cheek. Sorry, man. Hello, Miss Lichtman. Mm -hmm. How long have you been sitting there? Not long, Mr. Kelso. You look lovely, Princess. <laughs> Excuse me. You haven't exactly caught me at my best. Uh, that's my woman. <laughs> okay, Miss Lichtman. I'm a big boy. I know how to take my licks. Please. Clearly. Call me Elsa. Okay, Elsa. What can I do for you? I'd like to explain because I... I can join the dots, Elsa. Cole needs your help, Jack. The police department have frozen him out. Mm -hmm. Look, you're obviously a brave lady, but you can't fight all Cole's battles for him. I just wanted to apologize for... You don't have to apologize. You were right about Elysian Fields. Tell me something. What was Lou Buckwalter's regular job? He was a yeah. carpenter. He built sets for RKO, Warner Brothers. Set carpenter? Why would they want him killed? Perfect. Oh, on sets? He worked on sets. Somehow that went right Don't over my mind, head. Don't mind, I'd like to get a little rest now. I've got a lot more dots to join, and it's making my head hurt. I take it we're going to be playing as Kelso again. Mr. Jack. I hope we can meet again under less dramatic circumstances. I hope so too, Princess. Why does he keep calling her Princess? I'd like that. I'm sure you would. It's hitting on my girl. <laughs> Can't say I blame him. <laughs> you Kelso? Who's, Who's this guy? Asking? Peterson, yeah. Assistant DA. You're in the wrong building, Peterson. This is a hospital. A wise guy. Let me tell you a story, Kelso. Can I get the abridged version? My head hurts. Mm -mm. You're a funny guy, Jack. What do you want, Peterson? A colorful character mentioned your name. He said that you might know something about- There's a problem with colorful characters, Peterson. First they send you over a drink, then they buy you dinner, then you get a phone call in the middle of the night for a favor. Try rubbing shoulders with some solid citizens. They're the ones you're supposed to protect. You finished, Kelso? For the moment. Yeah. I'm going to run for DA, Kelso. The current administration stinks. And you want me to help? I'm looking for a DA's investigator. You get a gun and a badge and $120 a month. I get $150 a month now. <laughs> I'm going after the vice squad, Kelso. It's going to oh. get me elected. I've got oh. something better. I don't like the sound of that. How about Leland Monroe? The property Do mm -hmm. you think I fell down the stairs? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is getting good. Oh, pay Curtis Benson to visit his boss. All right. Thanks for the patch so, up, Princess. Might be the only R and R I get for some time. <laughs> I guess he just calls everybody princess, then I'll allow it. Uh, so that guy's running for DA. I do believe our current DA was also part of that squad that Leland was talking to. From that video we watched, from that talkie. Yeah, let's go pay Curtis a visit. I'd like to hear him explain himself and his part in all of this. So yeah, I'm definitely a little bit disappointed. I was hoping Cole would be a little bit involved already at this point, or that we'd be playing him again. But I guess that's fine. I guess we'll have to wait for the next one, potentially. Or maybe later on in this one. Oops. Oh, sorry. I was thinking about Cole. <laughs> Did she just call me a reaper addict? Dang, lady. Oh, here we are. 
Is this his house? Oh, Curtis Benson's apartment. 9.53 a.m. Pretty swanky looking apartment building. I like it. <laughs> Car's smoking a little bit. Weird. I don't know what happened there. Oh man, this building is freaking wild. I have uh, never seen anything like it. Is this his door? Oh. Uh... No, hang on. Oh, I see the gold handle. <sighs> Remember me? Jack! Oh. It's good to see you. You've Pretty caught sure me he's at a the reason. slightly inopportune moment. Can we, we do this some other time? Nope. Back off, Curtis. Move away from the door. Yeah. Jack, Pretty sure you tried to have me killed. There's no call for that. Oh, look at his couch. Smooth, Curtis. Look I'll give you that. Apartment. You try to get me killed and you still manage to be polite about it. Jack, how could you accuse me of having anything to do with that? Mm. I want to know all about you and Monroe, Curtis. You give it up or I beat it out of you. Get the fuck no. out of here, Jack. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Get out of town now while you still have the chance. You have no idea what kind of forces you're dealing with here. I guess we've exhausted the passive options. Oh, yeah. Sit tight, Curtis. I'm taking a look around. And I'm going to find everything. Piece of shit. Also, don't care if we get fired. We already have another pretty good thing lined up, pretty sure. Oh, God, we're going to have to question him. <laughs> Right, it's just a uh, champagne. Oh, there's lipstick on that one. Interesting. Who is he entertaining? But I guess that does not matter. Exactly. Do you expect to find Jack? I don't know, man. That's why I'm looking around. I saw we could go it onto the balcony. Woman's magazine, I assume. Not much else out here, though. Uh, hang on. Oh, here we go. The bedroom. Oh, hello? <laughs> Is she wearing his tie? How old are you, princess? Sixteen. Oh, Mr. no. How old are you really? Under Nearly sixteen. 13. Oh! Oh, just be done with him. <laughs> you take love where you can find it as you get old. Love? That has nothing to do with love, Curtis! Some might find your romantic notions endearing, Jack. I find them very tiring. You're finished, Curtis. That remains to be seen, Jack. I haven't told you about my new job, Curtis. DA's investigating. Oh, he what took do you think it. the DA reports to, Jack? Uh... Get dressed, you're getting out of here. He's not so bad. Oh my he just god. He lays on top of me and grunts for a few minutes. Darling, you've been groomed. And he buys me nice things. Get dressed, you're leaving. You're a sick man, Curtis Benson. She will only come back. <sighs> well, that's gross. Not exactly what I expected to see when I noticed the lipstick on that freaking glass. <laughs> Ew. What do we got here, cigars? It does not matter. What else is there to find? Hmm. There's got to exactly be more. What exactly do you expect to find, Jack? Yeah, you can stop asking me that. I'm not sure. I'm not leaving till I. F Ooh, hang on. What do we got here? A bust? A horse? Okay, I'm finding a whole lot of nothing so far. Freaking betting a thirteen-year-old. Oh, here we go. This is probably what we're looking for. What do we got here? California Fire and Life. Company is... Jack, you've made a terrible mistake. Oh, an insurance agreement. I knew you Hang on. Now, well, you can. Can. Ooh. Oh, now yeah, Alicia. The California Fire and Life Company, in consideration of the premium of 1,105 to be paid per annum, ensures the lesion fields developments against all losses or damage occurring to Rancho Escondido that burnt down. Oh yeah. Look, so they built them to be burnt down to get a huge settlement. Yeah, is that what I'm gathering here? $221,000. Damn. California. What exactly do you expect to find, Jack? Okay, well, that's interesting. 
Is there more? I think there might be more. Keep looking. Eddie Wasted. That's just a record. Neat. Looks like they weren't just having champagne. Jack, you've oh, made a terrible what's this? mistake. <sighs> Suburban redevelopment fund. Get all the stockholders. I need to follow the paper trail. Okay. Who do we got here for 2000? No way I'm going to be able to read any of these names. Oh, hang on, hang on. There was more to it. I saw it. But we did find all the clues. Excellent. But what's behind this? Another one. Oh, Curtis Benson. So he's getting his payout. Mm -mm. Jack, you've made a terrible mistake. I do believe it's you, Mr. Benson, yeah, well, who's made a terrible mistake. Let's let's have a little chat. I want answers, Curtis. Mm -hmm. So pay attention. Please, Jack. I'm not a violent man. <laughs> you may not be violent, but you obviously have no issue using violent people to get what you want. Yeah, motive for fraud. Don't get it, Curtis. You're Money? vice president of the company. Why Young take girls? the risk? It's a simple business transaction, dear boy. <laughs> well, he's obviously not being honest with that one. But do we have the red clue to pin a lie on him? Oh, I think this carried over the clues from last case where I missed a few for sure. <laughs> Damn it. Thousand suburban redevelopment shares at $100 each made to Curtis Benson. 4,000 of them. Wow. Probably that's the clue to prove that he's doing it for money, right? Oh, he is looking so irritated and a little bit ashamed. Lie. You're lying, Curtis. Something happened at the company, didn't it? That's why you took the bribe. Bribe? What bribe? <laughs> How can you accuse me of benefiting ahead of the company? Uh, perhaps all the frickin' bonds you got, man? Yeah... That's gonna be a lot of money. <laughs> I noticed Ooh. that the share certificates yes. are in your name, Curtis, not the company's. Mm. What did you use as collateral? Those sons of bitches in Sacramento. They passed me over for president. Sent me here because they believed it was a backwater. But they were wrong. Los <gasps> Angeles will become the capital of the West, not San Francisco. This place will be the city of the 20th century. Mm. And I'm going to get my cut, Jack. You're going to jail, <laughs> Curtis. You and your cronies. Hopefully. We'll see about that, Jack. Oh, he's probably right. <laughs> yeah, about the suburban redevelopment plan. Tell me about the suburban fund. redevelopment fund. You're talking about the future of Los Angeles. Mm. You cannot interfere with these plans. Information, Curtis. Business people who have joined forces to meet the demand for new homes. <laughs> I think we got ourselves another lie. <laughs> Let's, uh, yeah, insurance agreements. Rancho Escondido, partially funded by private investments linked to Elysian Fields. Ooh, I don't know if this is a lie or a doubt situation. Oh, that's a tough one. Maybe the redevelopment fund? But I don't know. He's kind of making a different face compared to the face he was making. No, I don't know. It's still kind of a similar face. Okay. The eye flicks are his tail, but it just depends. <laughs> Do we doubt or lie? I think I'm going to go with a lie and I'm going to use the redevelopment fund. I don't know. Yeah, I think we will lie. You're lying, Curtis. They're going to burn those movie sets they call houses, and you're carrying the insurance on them. That's and how true. How do you approve that, Jack? Fuck. <laughs> Insured value certificate made out to Rancho Incondito. Maybe this. Maybe. Rancho Incondito oh, burns yes. to the ground. California Ooh. Fire and Life is carrying the paper. Jack, the best result you could get from insurance would be replacement cost. The stakes are much, much higher. Huh. Yeah, replacement costs if the replacement is for better materials than what you actually use and so the flimsy leftover shit from some freaking set. But yeah, Buck Walter case settlements. Why the big payoff in the Buck Walter that. case? Yeah. It was bound to bring it to attention. Who could yeah. have predicted this particular confluence of events? <laughs> Elsa Lickman as the beneficiary who spurns the cash. The brilliant but flawed detective becoming her lover. And you, Jack taking their bait. <laughs> you buy green lumber and use it to build houses. How do you expect it to end? Mm -hmm. Mr. Monroe has a fine reputation for building houses. 
What would I know about his choice of building materials? Oh my god. Oh, that is some serious eye contact. Look at his eyebrow, though. He's got something going on on that brain. Oh, what? <laughs> he looks like he's getting away with something. I think doubt, because he's not doing the lying face, but he's definitely not doing a very trustworthy face. <laughs> but let's check the log again, because we need to be sure. Mr. Monroe has a fine reputation for building houses. What would I know about his choice of building materials? I don't know if he knows about the materials. I don't think he cares anyway. Uh, so we're talking about Monroe and his reputation of building homes. Inferior lumber. Would this be? Is it another lie? Because we could bring up the lumber, but I don't know if this guy even cares or knows about it. Though I suppose the insurance company probably would have to go out and check on this sort of thing, right? after a fire. It's actually kind of nice when you call it a lie because they give you a little bit of a hint in their dialogue back and forth afterwards or else they probably would have gotten that last one wrong. <laughs> so the inferior lumber might be it to call him on a lie but I also kind of feel like this might be a situation to doubt because he's doing such a different face this time compared to the last two. Let's doubt. Give me what I need or I'll beat it out of you. <laughs> it's all no, there I'm not in afraid the case file. Oh? If you know what to look for. Looks scared. Okay. Very neat, Curtis. <laughs> I think I do. Maybe I can't work it out, but Phelps can. Yes, he may yes. be many things, but he is one of the best detectives the LAPD <gasps> has ever had. Oh, Your card is marked, so. Jack. You'll have an unfortunate accident if you don't leave town. Oh, that sounds Your like a California threat to me. California isn't the same as mine, Mr. Benson. <laughs> Not at all. Are we heading over to Cole? <gasps> Please? Can we be partners to each other? <gasps> That would be so amazing. Hopefully that's what the last case is. So where are we going now? That was quite the uh, interesting conversation. Hang on, bring that back out. I don't know where I'm going. California Fire and Life, damn it. Okay. Well, also how lucky was it that the uh, guy running for DA came and saw us today? Worked out quite nice. This is not actually the way I want to go. Excuse me? Control your car. Really? Hang on, hang on. <laughs> I'm sure I am. Damn, I was really hoping we were gonna go meet up with Cole. I have a feeling that's how this case is gonna end though, is the two of them meeting to discuss. Hopefully. Hopefully. But I'm really coming around to uh hello oh, 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 oh. Okay, that could have gone worse. I'm really coming around to Jack Kelso though. I like that he can put the differences aside and acknowledge the fact that Cole is an exceptional detective. The finest, even. Oh! What's your Jesus problem? Christ. <laughs> uh, I do like the detail, though, that the people you're interrogating, and it took me obviously a very long time to realize it because I think I've only started to come into it during arson, that they'll make a different face depending on lying and when to doubt. All of those cases leading up to this are preparing me for these these next two, maybe three, I don't know, maybe there'll be more than five cases. Either way, everything we've been through has been preparing me for these moments, and I'm I'm pretty ready, I'm feeling pretty ready. Definitely feeling way more ready than I did when we were on traffic, because <laughs> I was pretty shit back then. Still pretty shit, but a little less so. Okay, <laughs> California fire in life. 10.21 a.m. What are we doing here? Oh, I guess looking into the evidence of that case, since he did kind of hint at it. But if you know what you're looking for, you'll find it in the files, right? I think that's what he said. I'm just going up to my office party. Got to check over some files. Mm -hmm. Take the elevator. First door on the right when you come out. You know the way, Kelso. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for telling me the way to the office. I totally knew where I was going. Say, could I borrow some of that mascara? <laughs> I'm kind of getting my hopes up with that whole prospect of that future DA taking, um, being on our side. Maybe we will be successful in taking Leland Monroe down. All right, what do we got going on here? Is this the file right so, here? Curtis, what is it you don't want me to see? Yeah, Curtis. Select the corner. Okay, so we definitely want to turn this. We already read this, though. Is there something in here that I missed before? 
Secret claims investigator. Maybe we need to talk to Timothy Lee. Maybe there's another file we should be looking at. Oh, improved land value. Insurance oh. replacement value for the house is nine hundred dollars. Current value of the house and land is thirty-five hundred. It's quite a significant Christ, increase. How many of these dumps are we carrying on the books? <laughs> uh, is that all we needed? Okay, there must be more. Let's let's keep digging. There's got to be more in these files. There's got to be. Okay, what else we got on this piece of paper? City of Los Angeles to do against loss or damage not exceeding nine hundred. Right, that's what he was just talking about. Policy number. There's something else in that report. I know it. Mm hmm. But what? <laughs> Maybe over here. This. Oh. Thirty-four degrees, oh, four minutes, case file. twenty-nine yeah. seconds north. One hundred eighteen degrees, seventeen minutes, fifty-eight seconds west. If you can mark it on the map, I'll be there. I have a Detective Phelps of the LAPD <gasps> here to you. Hey, buddy. It's been a while. <laughs> Where's the go-between? She's awful easy on the eye for a foreign girl. Does that private dick patter actually work on anyone, Kelso? <laughs> it's not your style. You were always a little more direct. This is your Are dime, officer. Interrogating Cole? Would you have helped me if I asked, Jack? A little chuck on the shoulder, shot of Semperfy. Fuck you, Cole. Be a man. <laughs> Why send a woman to do your dirty work? You're a cop. Why do you want my help? I thought a PI might be a little more discreet. Mm. I'm no gumshoe. I used to be an investigator for this company before your investigation got me fired. Mm. Sorry to hear that, Jack. I'm sorry about a lot of things. <sighs> Is that an apology, Cole? Uh -huh. It's a feeble attempt at one, yes. <laughs> Look, Jack, it's a murder case and I need help to solve it. So what's it got to do with Elysian Fields developments? I ran it somehow. The flyers keep turning up whenever I find a domestic fire. Yep. They're boosters. Stiffing GIs for deposits, making them wait months for a throw-up house. They're already making more money than they can count. What's turned them into killers? So you believe me? Hide their secrets? This is why you dragged me into the Buckwalter case. Look, Jack. Maybe. I'm sorry. <laughs> but if not for me, do it for some of the poor saps who are dying. Or some of the leathernecks who are getting grifted. How about a jacket? I know you, Cole. You're still beating yourself up over that metal on Sugarloaf. Mm. The metal you think you didn't deserve, but you just don't mm. get it. Nobody deserves a medal. It's just the ridiculous situation you find yourself in and how you react to it. You think you failed sure. up on that hill. But courage isn't a tap you can turn on or off. Courage isn't permanent. It's a tenuous and fickle thing. Courage and cowardice exist in every man. Get over it. You got it off your chest. <laughs> I guess That's I a have. a little speech. Can you help me, Jack? <sighs> I'm thinking about it. Yes, say yes. <sighs> the Hall of Records is the place to start. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. So I just realized, too, I'm pretty sure Jack was in a flashback and he was the one who helped Courtney out when it came to his... A problem he found himself in with, uh, what's his face, Mickey? Hall of Records, 10.35 a.m. Are we together? Nope. I think we're still just Kelso. Okay, that's fine. I got my moment. It felt pretty good. Hopefully it's not the last. And I believe we've been here before. And we were tracking Hello down there. a serial killer. You need some oh. help there, oh. sir? The land <laughs> Who's that badge I missed? Where is it? <laughs> just up the stairs. Thanks. Okay. Okay. I've actually been there before. Well, not as Kelso though. Yeah, I remember seeing this in editing and getting so frustrated with myself because that shine was so obvious. Nice. Alright, upstairs to the records. I'm not entirely sure what we're looking for here. Maybe something with properties. Oh yeah. <laughs> I see they haven't replaced the chandelier yet. I imagine that will take a while. Good times. Good times. Yeah, I don't think this is the floor I'm meant to be on. Hang on, wait, no, is this it? This might be it, yep. Yeah. This LAPD doesn't look records. like the land registry. Uh, that's because it isn't. It's just <laughs> downstairs and across the way. Thanks. Uh, okay, you thank sure you. you don't want to stay and keep me company? Maybe mm -hmm. some other time, princess. 
<laughs> yeah, princess. I may be back. I don't know. Kind of got my eye on this German lady. <laughs> but she's kind of with my soon-to-be BFF. At least that's if I have anything to say about it. She said one floor down. I'm sorry, I was distracted. Yeah, probably right here. Hello there, sir. I'd like to see the company details of the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. Please. Certainly, sir. Just this way. Thank you. Ooh. Thank you. You can go now. All those All suburban records. sons of bitches ought to be listed in here. <laughs> okay. Let's find them. Suburban sons of bitches, eh? Southern film casting. Standing in... So oh, are these movies? Yeah, directors. Okay. Let's see if there's any that Buckwalter worked on. Is that what we're looking for here? Oh, shareholders is probably where our interests lie. Yeah. Perhaps. Perhaps. Oh, we can turn the page. Okay. So far, I'm not seeing anything familiar. Hang on, Suburban Redevelopment Fund! What's this? Let's see these names. Monroe. Leland Monroe. Directors? Is this not the clue? Oh, Courtney Sheldon! Courtney. <gasps> oh! For God's sake! And Fontaine! What's he got to do with this? So he knows Courtney. Yeah, that was him in the flashback. Alright. I'd like information on a plot of land. Okay, do you have the address? Not exactly. It's a new lot. Yeah. I have the coordinates. 34 degrees, 4 minutes, 29 seconds north. 118 degrees, 17 minutes, 58 seconds west. Another man with All a right. fine memory. That makes it a bit more difficult. <laughs> Come with me. Okay. Was it the last clue? Because I noticed there's still music playing. I believe that is in the Wilshire area. Oh, here we go. Oh, no. Don't make me. 34 degrees. 4 minutes. 29 seconds north. What? 118 Hang on, I hope you keep repeating that because I don't know. 118. 17 minutes. 17 minutes 58. 58 seconds west. 58 west. Holy crap. All right, we got 58 seconds west. And then what? It was three, four. Four. Oh, did I already find the it? Lot numbers one eight seven yes. six nine eight eight. <laughs> there you go. Unfortunately, that is just the beginning. We have at least a million lot numbers in the Los Angeles area. The registrations oh are in alphabetical order. You need to convert your lot number to a letter. Oh. How do I God. do that? <laughs> yeah. Over here, use this adding machine. There are ninety thousand entries to a book, so divide your lot number by ninety thousand. Divide our lot number by ninety thousand. What was my lot number? What was it? One eight. Oh my god. Okay, it's probably gonna tell us. There's no way the game expects us to remember, right? I right, got a calculator. One eight seven six nine One, eight eight divided eight, by seven. 90, yes. Six. The nine eight eight. Was that right? I think so. Divided by nine thousand. Fine. Nine. Zero. 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 One zero. million eight hundred seventy-six thousand nine hundred and eighty-eight divided yeah. by ninety thousand. Did I just hit C? Did that just clear it? Did I get it right? <laughs> can you say it again? Let me get a pen so I can just write it because you are of no use to me right now, Kelso. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Oh, you're supposed to hit this thing. Eight. I've never used a calculator like this before. Bear with me. We'll get there. Eventually. Nine to thousand. One million I know. Don't worry, Kelso. I got it. Divided by, by 90,000. This would have been a whole lot faster if you just done it on your own, man. There you go. This has got to be right. Right? 20. 20. <laughs> there you go. A starts at zero, so you want to add one to your number. 21. That number is your letter of the alphabet. Once you have the letter, find the right aisle, and you are in business. You do this every day? 
<laughs> All right, the letter for uh, 21 is A, B, C, D, T, U? I think it's U. It's gotta be U. Yeah, I think so. The game will tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I think this is it. No, I did Let's not have to reset my ABCs to find this out. <laughs> Except I did. All right, whoa. Uh, what am I looking for? One, eight, seven, six, oh nine, eight, eight. What a system. Here we go, right here. Randall Jones. The book value is 350. Yep. With the new home in place, mm -hmm. the improved value of the property is 3,500. They can make a killing. Whew. But how do they pull it off? By building shitty houses? I honestly don't know. Oh, 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 these guys again. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, at least we have a gun you know this time. Why I've come for the caddy? The extra trunk space. <laughs> One thing you learn in the war, boys. You do your talking once the smoke clears. Yeah. Oh, this feels good. Get some revenge. Finally. Okay, gotta go quick. Throw out the gun. Oh, 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 that's not good. I'd like to take that gun, please. Uh, if we can, that would be great. Thank you. Where is the last guy? He's probably out in the hallway. Hide. There he is. I'm gonna put holes in you, asshole. Oh, not if I put holes in you first! Oh god! Oh man! <laughs> he ran at me! That was terrifying! But we got him! Well done, Kelso. Well done. You're no coal. <laughs> but you're pretty close to it. I need a word, Courtney. Library. Ooh, That's okay, here Jack. we go. You, you didn't need to come all the way down It's here. important, Courtney. How can I help? Tell me about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. What are you talking mm -hmm. about? Don't fuck with me, Courtney! <laughs> Jack, I swear, I don't know what you're talking about. How does your name appear as one of the investors in the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? You're out of your mind. Mm -hmm. I was down at the Hall of Records checking on a property company called Elysian Fields Developments. Their funding comes from the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. Seriously, Jack, I have no idea. Your name is there, Courtney, with some pretty interesting I don't have chills. The mayor? The district attorney, some dirty cops, and your buddy, Dr. Harlan Fontaine. Dr. Fontaine. Fontaine. Yeah. Dude's Spill dirty, it, man. Courtney. I want all of it. Fontaine and the rest. He's getting you mixed up in some pretty pretty bad business, pretty sure. Fontaine took the morphine off our hands. Mm -hmm. Look, Jack, I know you said to get rid of it, but it's okay. I did something good for once. He reinvested the money for us. That's it. I remember this conversation. That's what's happening. They're building houses for GIs, Jack. I turned a mistake into something beneficial. Not something quite that's going to help out the guys. Courtney, so naive. They're building matchstick houses. They're going to burn them for the insurance money. They'll probably stiff the poor it. bastards for the deposits. Please, Jack. Say it isn't so. That's so, Courtney, I'm afraid. Harlan's it's a so. doctor. A good one. He helps out a lot of people. Looks like he's helping himself, Courtney. You're the fall guy. Mm, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's why he doesn't actually know everything that's going on. And they used his name. Courtney, you done fucked up. I knew he was just a naive kid who wanted to do good, based on the flashbacks and everything. And all the newspapers. Kelsey's apartment. Ooh, 6 p.m. Quite the uh, building. Oh, is that our phone? New person of interest, Harlan Fontaine. He's been a person of interest since the very beginning, since that very first newspaper. Yes, I answer it. Jack Kelso. Mm hmm. Who's asking? Sounds familiar. Monroe. Yeah, I was yeah. <laughs> when you'd get around to calling. I'd like to meet with you, Mr. Kelso. I bet you Bring would, Cole. Mr. Monroe. But I value my skin highly enough to not want to meet with you. I can just send some <laughs> more of your man. boys around and we'll have a nice cup of tea. You realize that I could make you a very wealthy man, Mr. Kelso. Not interested, man. $220 a month? <laughs> Probably. Substantially better. 
I'm going to have to let it slide, Mr. Monroe. Are you haggling with me, Jack? I might be. Come around to my place at 9. 5164 Santa Monica Boulevard. Don't go alone. You come? I might. Probably. Probably. Good night, Mr. Monroe. I like that he's loading his gun, though, while he talked to him. He's coming prepared. <sighs> oh, oh, oh. Who's he calling? Who's he calling? Probably Elsa. Or Cole, maybe. Oh, already heading there. Leland's apartment, 7 o'clock p.m. I want to look around his apartment, but fine. I guess we're heading over to Leland's. I'm guessing he called for some backup, though he was probably calling Cole to let him know where and when. Also, I'm a little bit sad that we haven't really gotten to do much with Herschel, because I was really starting to like that guy, especially the last case we did together. He was getting so into it. He reminded me of a younger me when I first started playing this game. Really, man? Really? Oh, this is, this is, this is high stakes, man. What is, what are we going, uh, what's gonna happen? Uh, I so badly want to see the end of this game, but I also don't want it to ever end. I'm getting sick of these LA drivers cutting me off, goddammit. <laughs> that one went flying. I didn't even hit him that bad. I don't know if this is the street we want, but it does look like it leads to a very wealthy area, so probably... Oh, yep. This is his area, all right. Is that his house? Oh, look at this yard. He's got a whole freaking courtyard. Leland Monroe's mansion, 11 o'clock p.m. Oh, what? What's, what's this? Oh, is this set up? Is this set up? I appreciate oh, no. Help, all of you. Oh. We can reminisce later. I want a back. minimum of noise and no prisoners. No prisoners? This Anybody isn't Pele Lou, Jack. These guys are grifting GIs. That's what they do for a living. It's okay, yeah. Jack. We all feel the same way. Just hasn't turned out quite the that way we imagined. Let's get it done. Teams of two at the ready. Where's Cole, though? Why didn't he call Cole? Oh. <laughs> this is getting very good. Of course, we just have a pistol. I assume I'm the one who's going to be shooting the first shot, yeah? They look ready. Right, let's do it! Oh my god, look at them all! Let's go get the gun off that body if we can. Throw up. Oh god, oh god. Okay, we're good, we're good. Got it, got it. Oh, I just saw the guy's hat got blown right off. Sorry, man. Okay, all our guys are up, we're good. I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, is this a shotgun? I didn't even realize noise. That's the stuff. Come on, buddy. Okay, though it might not be the best weapon for this situation here. Gotta get closer. Get him! Oh, okay. Well, we'll just take his gun then, yeah? If he had one, he may not have. Yeah. Last one. Oop. Oh, there's more, there's more. There is more coming. Man, our guys are good. All right, man, hold the perimeter. I got <sighs> personal you. business with Mr. Leland God Monroe. Damn. Kelso, I am so proud of you right now. Yeah, let's get in there. You want me? Oh, cool. oh. Okay. Look at this fireplace. Nice try, asshole. Come on. Yeah. Are we good? I think we're okay. I'll take that. Oh, look at this bear. 
It's huge. Okay, I don't actually know where I'm going in here. This place <laughs> is a mansion. Oh, gold handle. Always follow the gold handles. Oh, we're back outside. Okay, I guess that was the right room you wanted to be in. Oh, here we go. There it is. Oh God. Put the weapon down now. A little late for that, there, Kelso. Oh, <laughs> that was our gun. <laughs> Hi, miss. A little awkward. Oh, really? Just don't do it. It's not worth it. You're a very sweet looking girl to be holding such a big gun. I know how to use it, mister. <laughs> I'm sure you do. So how about pointing it over there in the direction of Hollywood instead of at me, princess? You're quite the wise guy. Maybe. I don't normally shoot women, princess. How about putting the cannon down? Oh! oh you bitch! <laughs> Damn. She did it. At least she had a terrible aim. I didn't think you had the guts, sweetheart. Called her bluff. I was never very and good lost. at reading women. <laughs> Monroe, uh, where are you, damn it? Oh, he left. He's probably not even here. Oh. Okay, uh, we don't look very well Keep in this cover. Going, there we go. You got this, Jack. Tis but a flesh wound. Dick shots. My specialty. <laughs> Are we going upstairs? Uh, let's see if they've got something better for us. Nope. Oh! Oh! Oh, there's one upstairs. Okay, well. Did not see that coming. I he's he's slick. Oh, we'll see about that. Okay, I got, I got, I got to reload. <laughs> There's two of them. I okay, got one. Christ. Just Pathetic. They couldn't even get me from the higher ground from the vantage point. Sad. I would be so embarrassed if I were you guys. Or maybe not, because then I'd be dead. <laughs> hey, Leland. How many fucking goons you got? I don't think there's anybody in here. Oh, a nice bathtub. Pretty sweet little room. Bedroom? <gasps> he is here! Yeah, uh, so. <laughs> That's my oh. opening negotiating position. Oh, oh damn! You crazy son of a bitch! I know, right? You get in here. It's pretty amazing. I'm bleeding to death. Get me a doctor. Nah. I thought I had an invitation, Monroe. Your boys outside were certainly expecting me. Mm-hmm. Oh! Ah, my second offer. You sadistic bastard. Really? What do you want? I'm going to take a look around, Monroe. Then I want you to tell me what you know about the mayor and those Trojan houses that you're building. Yeah, so don't go dying on us. You better be alive when I'm done. And I warn you, it's probably gonna take me a while. Probably his desk, yeah. There's always something on the desk. Oh, newspaper, yeah. <laughs> you just sit back, Leland. I'm gonna have a read of this paper after I look at this picture. What do you got here? Oh, the meeting. The Suburban okay. Redevelopment Fund. For Rick and Fontaine there. Remind me what they say about absolute power, Monroe. Fuck you, Jack! <laughs> Call me an ambulance already! Uh, Alright, yeah, let's let's check out this paper. Uh, Suburban Redevelopment Fund promises 10,000 new homes. It's a pretty big promise. Dr. Fontaine. Oh, Fontaine. I oh, need pretty. to speak with you urgently. Sit down. Please, sit down. Tell me about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. Well, this is recent. It's the fund we are using to channel money into the development of new houses. Why is my name on the board of managers? Technically, you are a major contributor. Please, Courtney. Never trusted this guy Those from the moment we first saw him. Doctor. They're going to be burned for the insurance. That's a scandalous allegation, Courtney. Do you have any proof? Oh. Jack Kelso, an investigator for California Fire and Light, has seen him. He was what are you doing, man? 
Did I just give him that information? I don't know what to say. I feel that I have been duped. Who do you think is behind this subterfuge? Jack says it's a property developer named Monroe. No. He said it goes all the way to the mayor. No. You cannot have believed that I was involved. <sighs> is he gonna inject him with something? I don't know what to believe anymore, Doctor. I hope that you weren't involved. Thank you for your trust, dear boy. It's not deserved. <laughs> Be still, Courtney. I don't think it'll kill Courtney, though, right? Finally over. Well, maybe he will. Let them go. God, he's fucking psychotic. Let them drift away. Oh my God! I'm pretty sure he just killed Courtney. Jesus Christ. Courtney is definitely so naive. Like, come on, man. Talk to Jack. Don't <laughs> go directly to fucking Fontaine, the guy we just told you was in on all of this. And one of the masterminds of the whole damn operation. I still need three. I need to go back and get the rest before we finish this. Okay, there's, looks like there's something over here. No. His safe, maybe? Looks like it's open. Yeah. Ooh. Actually, there's some good stuff. There's some more funds or um, certificates. Yeah. I'm guessing Vincent's portfolio is only a fraction the size of yours, Monroe. Well, I'm sure. I am sure. What about this? Is that a case file? <sighs> intelligence report. Criminal intelligence report on Dr. Harlan J. Fontaine. Blackmail, potentially? Dr. Harlan J. Fontaine is Im implicated in the supply and distribution of narcotics in the greater LA County area. Or we got this to get him off the hook for it. That was what Fontaine got out of it. In his capacity as a clinical psychiatrist, he has dispensed large quantities of contraband morphine to drug dealers and users under the pretext of prescribing treatment for his patients. Between July 18th and September 3rd, night, can you keep it down? I'm trying to read here. <laughs> Between July 16th and September, or sorry, July 18th and September 3rd, 1947, 22 suspects arrested for narcotics possession claimed that the drugs were medications given to them to alleviate the symptoms of various psychiatric illnesses. Several showed paperwork to this effect. No pattern was noted by arresting officers, however, and no further action taken since each charge accounted to no more than a misdemeanor, and the suspects were processed across four separate divisions, Central Hollywood University and Highland Park. On September 7th, 1947, after a lengthy interrogation, suspect Reginald Barkley offered the name of an associate he only knew by as Doc Fontaine. See interview transcript. Da, 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 da. Barkley stated that Fontaine was the selling party in the deal and brokered with Willie Baines Foster. Yet to be apprehended, Foster is known to LAPD administrative vice as a high-ranking career for Meyer Harris Cohen. On August 29th, again on September 6th, and then again on September 12th, 1947, Dr. Fontaine visited a men's haberdashery on Sunset Boulevard, a haberdashery known to be known and operated by Cohen. On all three occasions, Dr. Fontaine was inside for more than an hour. Two days after his final visit, on September 14th, a shipment of morphine with a street value of $4,000 was moved from a house in Brentwood to an east downtown warehouse, whereupon it disappeared. It is the opinion of this officer that Dr. Harlan Fontaine is a significant figure in the Smart. supply and distribution of narcotics. Keep the dirt on Fontaine under lock and key. This is your insurance. So it is blackmail. Okay, well, insurance. To keep him from uh, straying on this whole operation. Okay, you're sincerely Roy Earl. Roy Earl! Are you kidding me, Roy? He probably gave it to him. He's one fucking dirty cop, man. What do we got here? A little black book. Some phone number is Roy Earl. That's a hell of a payroll. Oh, they're all on the payroll. Okay. That's interesting. Hang on, wait, I want to look at that again. I want to see if there's any other names I recognize on there. So far, just Roy. O'Malley. Is O'Malley familiar? I don't think so. I don't think I recognize any of the other ones. Uh, I think that's it in here. I guess there's more. Do we find anything on his desk? Oh, yep, yeah, here we go. Oh, these people he's had killed? Morelli, Stevens. That name is familiar. Some sold up. The others obviously didn't know the links these sons of bitches would go to. Mm -hmm. It can't be stopped, Council. Know. There's too much money at stake. Kingdoms rise, Probably, right? kingdoms fall, Monroe. Ask the Emperor of Japan. 
fucking mercy. <laughs> mercy, Operator, really? Put me through to Phelps, our yes. squad. Yes. Yeah, Biggs, it's Jack. I'm at the He's arm, in a talkative though. mood. If you get here in a hurry, you might get something before he bleeds to death. <laughs> Elsa. <laughs> Thank God. Where? Oh. <gasps> Fontaine. What? Dead? Former patient. Courtney dead. <laughs> Courtney. So that crazy son of a bitch finally came back for a checkup. It's Monroe. He's raving. <laughs> you want information, cocksucker. You get me some medical help. <laughs> I've got to go, Herschel. Monroe's negotiating again. Do you want my final offer, Leland? Mercy? Tell me how I find the guy who has Elsa. Not Casey. Oh. He did whatever Fontaine asked. He had some kind of power over him. He, he, he did all the fires and then and he went off Monroe. the rails. The pyromaniac. I don't have a fucking name. He worked as a bug sprayer. Get me a oh. goddamn doctor. Oh, there's that one case where the neighbor even said he thought it was a bug spray guy. Or that they just had their place fumigated or something before that fire. The neighbor I really did not like. <laughs> so, Fontaine had Elsa kidnapped by the fucking psychopath. He's been causing all these Elsa, fires. Yes, yeah, Simon. I hope you die a painful death, man. <laughs> I have a feeling he's gonna survive just fine. Oh my god. Don't be over. Don't be over! No! <laughs> well, we found all the clues and we got all the questions correct. I was worried they were going to make me question Monroe there because I was <laughs> at only four stars. <laughs> really? Uh, the Suburban Redevelopment Fund has been dismantled. The old-fashioned way. And pretty well done, if I do say so myself. God damn! God damn, what a case. It was just getting good, too. I am already uh, very much looking forward to the next one. God damn. Well, holy crap, this is getting good. Damn, so somebody's kidnapped Elsa, who is presumably the guy we were after the whole time on Arson. We probably got the wrong guy on both of those cases. It's a two or three on all of them, probably. <laughs> There's some freak out there, some freaking origami crane freak out there with Elsa. That scares me a lot. <laughs> I am very nervous because I'm gonna be honest, with you, the limited time seeing Elsa, I honestly quite liked her. I realized she was doing things with a married man that she shouldn't have been doing, but honestly, she seems like a pretty good gal. Like, she seems to want to do what's right for the greater good, uh, just like Cole and just like Jack Kelso here, who I am also very much enjoying. I like this character quite a lot. I'm enjoying playing him more than I thought I would. Still prefer my Cole man. He's, he's my main guy in the game. <laughs> he's my protagonist, but damn, I'm already eager to play the next one. I'm curious if uh, Fontaine killed Courtney. I hope not. Hopefully just injected him with enough of, enough of something to make him pass out and stop asking questions. I don't know, but obviously he had it arranged to get Elsa kidnapped. He's probably gonna make some sort of trade for her. I don't know, we'll see. But Cole would probably do anything for her, even if it means giving up his morals in this case if he had to. I'm also curious too how much Fontaine is wanting to be involved in all of this, or maybe he just got mixed up with the wrong people, because it is interesting that Monroe kept that file in his safe uh, instead of just burning it or something. I'm sure he holds it over Fontaine's head to get his way. I, it may have, I guess Fontaine even uh, potentially was told by Monroe to get Elsa based on that last conversation. I don't know, I'm sure I'll see more in editing, so I may have more to say at the beginning of the next one, which I'm already very much looking forward to playing, but we'll leave it at that for now. Of course, let me know what you thought in the comments below, and thank you so much for joining me for this one. I do hope you enjoyed and if you did give it a like if you want to join me for whatever the hell's gonna happen in the next one <laughs> subscribe and i hope to see you in the next one bye